Just time for a quick glance at Uncle's shop next to the hotel as we leave Konya. We are heading northwards now into Cappadocia. At our first stop we're joined by our little friend here. Do that trick again, be roll. No. <laughs> Fortunately, Birol and Aran had some food and our little friend seemed quite pleased about that. Our first visit today is to this caravanserai. These buildings provided safe overnight accommodation for merchants and their cargoes who were travelling usually vast distances with, yes, their camel trains. The name for these camel trains, caravan, is anglicised as caravan. And of course, it's a name familiar to us still, especially if you're behind one on a narrow, bendy road. This one is called Agzi Callahan. I hope I pronounced that something like properly. Building commenced in 1231. There is an inscription on the building to tell us this. This was during the time of the Seljuk rulers. It was completed in 1239. This establishment would have had a resident imam or prayer leader for its mosque and a doctor, a vet, a blacksmith and a cook. Caravanserai in this area were built by the rulers. It encouraged trade and commerce and thus brought prosperity. We press on now along this road that's under reconstruction and pass hundreds of lorries loaded with sugar beet. Our next rest stop is at this supermarket with a very nice cafe upstairs. My silk scarf, you know, could be a good chance for you. I mean, uh, in a country that is wool, cotton, silk, you know. And our next visit is to what is called the Gorem Open Air Museum. 19 centigrade, it is good. Now it is 9 centigrade. Tomorrow 19 and sunny. Millions of years ago, there were several active volcanoes here and over the many years, their eruptions covered this area many feet deep in volcanic ash. Under its own weight, this ash turned into volcanic tufa, a type of rock which is soft and easily worked. And over the ensuing thousands of years, this rock was gradually eroded by the weather, the rain and the wind into the structures we see today. When man arrived on the scene, these rocks, easily worked as we said, could be chiseled into and living spaces were made. The temperature inside these spaces was fairly constant throughout the year and food could be stored in some places ready for the winter. You see, people are getting in, those are rock chapels. Other spaces could be made for the stabling of horses and lofts for pigeons. On windows, for what? Pigeons, right? Pigeon nests. In early Christian times, hermits came to live here and indeed what were in effect, monasteries were established. This process was particularly to be found in the days before Christianity was accepted and people could hide here from the persecutions they suffered. Later they could hide here from the early Arab incursions.
There are in some places, which we didn't see, whole towns built on the ground. Uh, we are in, a, in an area inhabited by religious groups, monasteries, and monasticism fostered, actually first started and then uh, fostered by uh, Cappadocia, here. Monastery started in one religious Saint Basil was the patron saint of Cappadocia. He was from here. Saint George, <coughs> Theodore, <coughs> Onophius, Barbara, Barbara, not Barnabas, Barbara. Come on. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Although early Christians seeking a hermit lifestyle found this area a suitable place for their purposes, there is evidence that these troglodyte dwellings were inhabited as far back as 3000 BC. But the Christian hermits found these Spartan dwellings conducive for their solitary contemplations. This area had been throughout the ages not only a crossroad of great trade routes but also a place where different philosophies, cultures and religions met and perhaps mingled. When St. Paul passed through Cappadocia in the first century, he observed that people worshipped gods including Zeus, Mitra, Attis and Dionysus. Let's have a look at some of the artwork inside these rock chapels. Though the Christians may have been persecuted by the Romans, the Arabs and others, after the Seljuks became established in the area, their religious tolerance, shown also by the Ottomans, led to amicable relations between them and the Christians. Indeed, I am told that pictures of Seljuk sultans can be seen along with those of Christian saints on the walls of these rock chapels. Right, so that's just about it for Gorem. Any time now we'll be getting in the bus again for the short journey to our overnight hotel at Avanos. Early this morning some of our group, not including me I might say, got up very early to go on a hot air balloon flight. And now the whole group has gone off for the day in the bus to look at some more of this interesting landscape. Except me, I'm having to have a day off. I'm just having a gentle stroll into town. If we just go over that bridge there, we'll cross the Kizilirmak River and be in the town centre. Avanos has been famous since Hittite times for its pottery made from the clay found along the river. Having crossed the bridge and gone down onto the embankment at the other side, I found a nice picnic table where I could sit and watch the geese. Right, so here we are then in Cappadocia. Everybody else has gone out on a folklore tour or something. I'm spending the day with the geese. 
been joined by another friend now. He's watching the geese as well. Seems to be quite a strong tide here. Right, so let's have a stroll around the town now. Just along the embankment is a reminder of that pottery industry I mentioned just now. Yes, well, I could just do with a coffee now, actually. Avanos is quite a small place. In fact, I think it describes itself as a village. I'm told that there are still many family-run potteries here. It reminds me a bit of the old Sheffield where you had lots of family-run steel and cutlery works. And there you are, you see, there are several outlets selling the products of these potteries. Avanos may not be Istanbul or London, but you can still get all the latest gadgets here, iPods or iPads or whatever they are. Let's go down and look at the mosque. When I got there, there was no one around, there was no one inside, and I was just coming out, patting myself on the back for having taken my shoes off in spite of nobody being there. And I was putting them on, on a little carpet just outside. A chap walked past. I don't know if he was the imam or just a passerby. But he told me off for putting my shoes on that carpet. Quite right too. In the main square, a statue of Ataturk. But we must get back to the hotel now. Tomorrow we leave for Ankara.